Turn to Matthew chapter 7 today. This is one of the scariest scriptures in the Bible, I think. Scary scripture. Matthew chapter 7. And we're going to look at verses 22 and 23. And I'll be reading initially out of the New King James Version, although I've got different versions for different verses. I'll, I'll be telling you those verses. I'll be telling you where to go. If you just write those down, there's room for taking notes always in your life. I think it's a good thing. Even if you don't keep the notes, just writing them down helps establish something in your head. So Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? Everybody say many. Many, many wonders. Many? Wow. So many will say, we did many things in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. It's one of the scariest scriptures in the whole Bible. It really is. When Jesus says, I never knew you, what, what, what does he mean by that? I mean, he's God, right? God knows everybody. Do you think there's anybody God's missed? You know, oh, where'd they come from? <laughs> God doesn't look down and go, I didn't know he was down there. I didn't know she, when did she get born? God's not surprised. What does he mean? I never knew you. How can he say that to anybody? But we have to understand what he means by that. And one of the things about the languages that the scripture is written in is sometimes we can draw things from the original language. What's interesting about this one is he says, I never knew you. And what he means by that is very similar. Now, don't get, don't get this completely wrong. As in just being, this isn't a sexual thing, but this is an intimacy thing. It says that Adam knew Eve. There was an intimacy, a closeness that is that close. You can't get any closer than that. Adam knew Eve. Jesus said, I never knew you. What is he talking about? I never experienced you. Might be one way to put it. I want to talk to you today about being experienced by God. Are you being experienced by God that's an interesting thought, isn't it? We come here to experience God. A lot of times that's the, the primary way that we think of it. We go to church together with God's people so we can experience God. But what if God wants us to come here so he can experience us? It's, it's, just, a, it's just a different picture, but it's an important thing to 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 do everything that we do keeps coming back to relationship i've been saying it for decades relationship 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 god wants us to be in relationship with him and with one another and so the question for you today is how is god experiencing you is god experiencing you for example we just finished a time of worship how did God experience you during worship? And again, we get into worship a lot of times and it's, ah, we're experiencing God. Well, worship was really good today. Boy, I could really feel it. Okay, that's, I'm not against that. And some days I, I'm with you. I'm human. I feel it more days, some more than others. You know, I, there's, there's more sometimes. But... That's really only part of it, isn't it? We don't just come here for him to give us an experience. We come here for us to give him an experience. Whoa. So even when I don't feel like it was all that good, 
maybe it was better than I think. <laughs> maybe it wasn't that good for me because my physical body was tired. I stayed up too late last night. I've got the sniffles. I've got this on my mind. I'm struggling. And maybe it's better even for us than we think because how many times have we said this? Fire falls on a sacrifice. Sometimes we are making a sacrifice to be here. I won't ask for a show of hands, but think about it. How many of you made any kind of a sacrifice to be here today? Some of you did. Some of us more than others. It was maybe not easy for some of us to get here, whereas for others it was just super simple. You know, I've got a truck that I love. And the first Sunday I drove it here, I couldn't wait to get to church, to drive my new truck to church. And then it didn't work because Lisa and I drive separately, and she was driving the truck at that time, so I was driving the Prius. <laughs> but it, it's, it's, you know, it was just a joy, though, to get into my truck and drive it to the church the first time I got to, to be at church. Well, was I really going to be at church or was I just getting the, the joy out of driving my truck? <laughs> That's, sometimes it's easy to do certain things. And some of you, you know, you may have had something that made it easy this morning. Maybe some of you, you know, you, you like the opportunity to come to church because it also uh, affords you that opportunity to go through Bigby. I'm not talking to anybody in particular. but. <laughs> You know, it's just funny. Actually, there are two people like that, Matt. But anyway, <laughs> only in the wintertime. Winter yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, it's just funny, though. There are times, though, when it's really, it really does take a sacrifice to get up and go, doesn't it? You, you just, just, it's, it's hard. But that sacrifice then becomes God experiencing you. Wow. I, I, do I want God to experience me? Well, I'd, I'd, I'd like to be better sometimes than the experience he has with me. <laughs> I'll tell you that. How many of you remember the scripture in Samuel, 2 Samuel, actually 6, verse 14? It says, David danced before the Lord with all of his might. That, that's, that's pretty radical. That's, that's a pretty radical guy right there. Danced before the Lord with all of his might. I have, I have this thing that I want to say to you that I, I think I said probably 15 years ago, something like this. I heard this preacher tell this. His name's Garner Tullis. He's been over here a couple of times. I don't know if we ever had Garner speak, but he's been here for events and stuff. And he was at, at Bethel in Valparaiso. And um, Garner has asked this question of his congregation. Are you convinced that God is convinced that you're crazy about him? Are you convinced that God is convinced that you're crazy about him? It's really something to think about, isn't it? it it's about going beyond what's necessary and being passionate and being passionately in love with God. And sometimes, now, most of you probably don't have this problem, but I have a little confession about my marriage to Lisa Sometimes she asks me to do things when I'm ready to go to sleep. Like put stuff on her feet and rub her feet. She's got this stuff that makes her feet nice and soft. And she likes her feet to be softer. And so she'll, I'm all ready to lay down and she wants me to rub her feet. And it's a sacrifice, I'm telling you. I'm ready to <laughs> drool coming out the side. Of my... <laughs> no, not that bad. But I, I do love her, and I'm willing to make a sacrifice for her. And she gets an experience. She gets to experience my love for her. Sometimes it's not all about her love for me. Sometimes it's about my love for her. How many think that's probably the way it should be, too? Works better in marriage. I'm going to tell you that right now if you don't know. You know, we, we go overboard all the time in the world. 
Well, <laughs> that's another funny thing. Remember, ladies, how the guys would go overboard for you until they had you, and then after they had you, they didn't go overboard anymore because they didn't have to go any board, overboard because they didn't need to land you know, the fish. They already had the fish, so they were just like... There's some men that are like that. Maybe that never happened to you. And if you're a woman who that never happened to you, you are so blessed. Like my wife. <laughs> sure, I'm going to say that when she's not in the room. Okay. <laughs> but see, sometimes we do things because we want no doubt left in the mind of the person about where we stand on something. So we go out of our way. We go overboard to make sure they know. Right? It's a good thing. Can I be honest with you? I, I see some people walking around who call themselves Christians that aren't very convincing. I see some people on Facebook who post things and one minute it's this thing and the next minute it's another thing and the two things posted together don't make exactly sense and I just wonder what's really going on there. Hmm. <laughs> Sometimes it's me. I, I have a weird sense of humor, so sometimes I don't realize that there's a double entendre going on, and I post something that I think is funny, and it also means something that I didn't realize it meant. But, eh, yeah. You know, I know the Bible says that, that man looks on the outward, and God looks on the heart, so I, I try not to judge people. But I also know that the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And some of the things that I hear people saying make me just a little nervous for them. Just ask this question of yourself. Do I have any friends who have any doubt whatsoever that I'm wildly crazy and madly in love with Jesus? Would, would people I associate with have any doubt that I'm not some kind of fanatic for Christ? I remember this wonderful man, and I think I've told this too many times probably, and I won't say his name, but I remember being in the church in Auburn, and we were in a building program, and this guy was wonderful. I mean, he gave us tens of thousands of dollars in December toward the building program and then turned around and gave us the same thing in January so that it would be over two different years as far as his giving went. But he didn't just give us stuff. I mean, money, he gave us stuff. He was able to go out and buy it for way cheaper than we could get it for. And he was connected to the builders who were building the addition, so he was able to buy it and get it to them and buy, you know, for $10,000, he could buy $20,000 worth of stuff. And he was, he was a very smart businessman. But I remember having a meal with him one time. Uh, Pastor Buzzard and I went with him to lunch, and we were talking about stuff. And I, I, in effect, I became the general contractor for that deal. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was the one that was always running around and trying to make sure everybody was where they were supposed to be when they were supposed to be there. And and we were talking about the the church service and, and he was saying how much his wife had really enjoyed the last service. And he goes, yeah, and you know, she's one of those real demonstrative people, but I, you know, I'm just quiet. I'm just a big, you know, I like to do what I'm doing. And, and we were thankful that he was giving, you know, we didn't ask him to do more, but he says, you know, I'm not very, I'm not very demonstrative is the only word I can think of. I forget how he described it. And this was the guy who was really high up in the Republican party over in that area over there, and I saw him on TV at the National Convention for the Republicans that year with a sign in one hand and his fist up in the air, jumping. <laughs> Couldn't do it in church because he's a, just a quiet man. But at the National Convention for Reagan, he was, yeah! He might have had a little bit of a problem there. And, and, and so I, I don't do that to berate him. I trust that he's with the Lord now. But I wonder if when he got with the Lord, the Lord went, really? You jump up and down for Reagan, but you couldn't do it for me? And have you ever known people like that? You see them at the ball game. They are so pumped. Whoa! 
And it makes me ask the question, how is God experiencing us? What is God experiencing from us? Are we ready to be as crazy as David and dance for the Lord with all of our might? Is God experiencing our love? Mark 12, 30 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. That's a lot. Are we using everything we have to love God? Are we ready? Do we want to? Is it even on our radar? Well, I'm not sure I ever want to do that. You know, I don't know. I want God to experience me. I really do. And by the way, there's a way to kind of gauge yourself too. Not just if you're demonstrative in worship. I know there are some people who really aren't demonstrative anywhere they go. You know, they just don't get excited about anything. There are a few of those people out there. And maybe that's you. But um, there is an area in which you can see whether... Or, or use as a litmus test for how God is experiencing you. And, and I've noticed that when we really are in love, we'll do all sorts of things that we might not otherwise do. Have you noticed that? People who are in love will do things that they wouldn't normally do. So, you know, we've got this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, excuse me. I got, I, I got ahead of myself there. See, that was what was interesting. I read to you from Mark... Chapter 12 and verse 30, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. Luke 10, 27 says something very similar. He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. If we are doing the first part, loving the Lord with all that we've got, Then the second part, loving others, that should come easy. And if we're not loving the Lord with all we've got, maybe that's why the other part doesn't come easy. Oh, I'm preaching to myself if I'm not preaching to you. I say I love the Lord, but how does it look? How does it manifest? How does it show up in the earth I'm walking in? And around, how does, it, how does it resonate around the people who have to put up, I mean, uh, who know me? <laughs> if I want to experience him, and I want him to experience me, my, uh, my action toward others is going to be key. John 4.20 says, If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who, loves, who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. That's another scary scripture. I didn't tell you this was going to be like the scariest message I've preached in a while, did I? Well, if it doesn't scare you, it scares me. See, when I love God with everything, my love manifests And it manifests toward others. And when it manifests towards others, guess who's experiencing it besides the others? It would be God. I believe much of what God experiences in us, he experiences because we're giving it to others. And he's there and sees it. In fact, oftentimes he's there with them. In fact, even the least of these, in as much as you've done it, the least of these, you've done it to me. Wow. So if I've got stuff going on where I've got a war or a feud or problems or, you know, and I'm... And I'm not saying now, I'm, this, is not, this is not a message on brown boundaries or doing away with them. There's a time for boundaries, but the question is, is my boundary there because of love or is my boundary there because of something else? This is really tricky. 
This is not an easy step to think through, but I want you to think a little bit today. Sorry, it's a thinking message. Um, <laughs> have you ever had someone hurt you and you hurt them back so they'd know how it felt? I, I worry about that a little bit. Sometimes they do what they did by accident. We do what we did on purpose. <laughs> we think about it for weeks before we do it. Uh, <laughs> what's God experiencing when that happens? What is he experiencing of me when I do that? I don't want that kind of experience to be what God experiences from me. I, I, I want to have God experience me and I want to experience God, but I want it to be God's way. And by the way, sometimes when we, without realizing it, God can tr be trying to work through someone, even someone that is not easy for us to be around, but he's trying to work through them anyway, and we aren't experiencing God because he wants us to experience him through that person, and he may have something for them to bring into our life, but we're trying to avoid it like the plague because we don't want it. Because of the person. And sometimes God uses the weirdest people. Have you ever had God use somebody weird to teach you something? Oh, it happens to me a lot. Because every one of you is weird. I'm just saying, I'm the only normal person here. I mean, you know, we each have our own normal. We're comfortable with our normal. Yeah. We might be disqualifying ourselves from being experienced by God if we reject somebody that we don't want to mess with when God wants us to mess with them and love them and show his love to them so that he can experience us. Is this making sense? It's kind of a weird approach to things, but what I want you to be aware of is there's, there's gold in everyone, or some people shorten that and say they're God. there's God in everyone. I believe that's true. Initially, when a, when a child's born, I believe God's presence is there. I believe God, in the likeness and image of God, they were made. But then they can get pretty, pretty rough as they grow older. But I believe deep down there's a little bit of God in everybody, and he's hoping that that will spring forward and bear fruit. Does that make sense? So sometimes we just need to look for that gold. We need to dig deeper. To see what, what God can experience of us. Because it might be a sign or a wonder or a miracle that you have anything to do with some people, huh? Some people are like, I don't think I can put up with that person anymore. I know. But maybe that's what God's got in mind. Maybe that's how he's going to experience you. Loving others who maybe don't deserve it. Kind of like he loved you when you didn't deserve it. Hebrews 13, 2 says, Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Now, I know some people are stranger than others. I want you to be reminded that the word that is translated angel in the Greek is often also translated messenger. So sometimes the stranger is God's messenger for you to experience God or experience something of God that you wouldn't experience otherwise. And sometimes the stranger becomes your vehicle through which they experience God and God experiences you. Is this a picture that I'm, I'm trying to paint here? I hope you're seeing this because I think there are times when, when we're missing our opportunities for something amazing to take place And if we don't receive what he's sending to us because it comes in a package that weirds us out a little bit, it might be that we miss his message to us. Maybe that angel's kind of weird, but they are. Something God wants to share with us is going to come through maybe even their stupidity or their weirdness or their lack. So how can I be sure that God's experiencing me? 
trying to be real practical here today. I want to remind you that it's not the fact that you're doing signs and wonders and miracles that proves that God's experiencing you. That goes back to our first text. Let me read it again. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Just because you've had the gift of prophecy work in your life doesn't mean he's experiencing you. Have, Have we not cast out demons in your name? You're overcoming dark demonic forces and that doesn't mean he's experiencing you. Have we not done many, I, I used the word many, many times earlier, many signs and wonders? I, I'm just happy. I've seen a few. I don't want to get into his presence on that day. And whether you felt his presence here this morning or not, there's a day coming when you are going to be fully in his presence. <laughs> Man, are you going to be in his presence? And I want you to have a good day. I want that to be a good day for you. That needs to be a really good day. That needs to be the best day of your existence. And, and I don't want him to say to you, I, I never experienced you. But Lord, I, I went to Bethel in defiance. It was a hot church. Lord, we had, we had stuff happen in there. I prayed for people and stuff happened. And I prophesied over people. And it was great. Because some will get into his presence and miss it. They will have missed it. And, it, and, and the evidence is not how many amazing things you did. Your, your, your greatness in the earth. The way to know that God is experiencing us is for each of us to regularly experience God with others. And that's why God did this thing he called church. And it's not just what we do here on Sunday morning. Remember, I like to say this a lot, you know. This is, the church is opposite the NFL. We practice for six days, and they practice for six days and play the game on Sunday. We practice on Sunday, we play the game for six days. We should be out there having experiences with people and those experiences become ways through which God experiences us. And then we come together and we experience God with one another and we bless one another and we minister to one another and these things build us up and they make us able to go out there and for God to experience us in the world and for us to be an experience to the world. A good experience, that is. (laughs) Times when I'm an experience to the world, I'm not sure how good it is. The church, the gathering enables us to experience him and for him to experience us as we experience each other. So, have you been experiencing God? Yeah? Good? I want to make sure that you understand it's not just a one-time, you know, I prayed, I prayed the prayer, I'm good. I prayed the prayer. I had a one, one time I had this experience. I shed a tear when I had that. I prayed that prayer and I shed a tear. I know I had an experience. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, 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 I prayed the prayer, shed the tear, had the experience, said the right words, got up in the tank at the church, you know. They put me underwater. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, my, I did all that. And, you know, the pastor prayed for me one time and I, whoo, I could really feel it, man. It was something. It was amazing happened to me 30 years ago or three years ago or three weeks ago it's supposed to be an ongoing experience just in case we've forgotten Ephesians 5.18 says don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life instead be filled with the Holy Spirit one way of reading that is be ye being filled Keep being filled. Just just keep getting filled. Look for those opportunities to be filled. And part of that is just then going in and doing whatever I need to do so God experiences me, whether I experience him or not. Signs and wonders and miracles, I believe, will accompany being filled with the Spirit. But being filled with the Spirit is the key to experiencing Jesus and to having Jesus experience you. 
I want to experience more of him. I want him to experience me. I want there to be something there going on that isn't just, I got my ticket stamped and I'm on my way to heaven. I don't know whether you know this or not, but everybody's ticket stamped and they're all on their way to heaven. Did you know that? And then there'll be this thing where he takes the sheep and the goats. <laughs> there'll be this thing, this moment where he says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That doesn't mean they all get to stay. Some will choose not to be there. Some have already chosen not to be there. That's another message for another day. I don't want to get, I don't want to get too far here. Here we go. John 10.10. 10. One of my favorite verses, I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. The more abundantly is really just one word. And it's just more, more, more. That's why my phone number is 419, get more. It really is. My wife says 419, get well. She works at the doctor's office. God has more for me. He has more for you. I don't want to ever get cheated out of the more. I don't want some time back in my past to be the best moment of my experience with God. Remember when? Oh, that was so good. Yeah, that was the best. I, but he's got more. I'm not saying those experiences aren't markers and, and milestones and important. But he's not done with you yet. He's got more. There's more. And the more you experience, and experience him and the more he experiences you, the more your more is going to increase. How many of you want more? All right. He wants us to have life and more. More. I told you it was a thinking message today. I made you think. It hurt? Okay. Yeah. Well, I want to pray for you. Now, I'm going to let Mark pray for you. Mark, come up here. And you pray for him. I, just, I, just, I think we'll get more out of that. Is everybody so quiet? You're thinking? Remember to make a joyful noise unto the Lord today, okay? There you go. Much better. That was pretty joyful. How about if we make it really joyful? Yes! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. That's a joyful noise unto the Lord. Everybody stand up. Just hold your hands out like this. Jesus, we just want more. We want more of you. We want more encounters with you. We want to be filled with your presence and with your spirit. Just load us. And if we're resistant, pound on us until we don't resist anymore. Just bring, it, bring us into your presence. Bring us into a longing for you. Help us to just search for you wherever we are, whatever we're doing, whoever we're with. Fill us so that we can fill others. There are people out there that are lost, people out there that don't know you, people who know you but have run away from you, people that need you now more than ever. Our nation needs you now more than ever. Fill us so that we can do your work and bring us back to you. Bring all the lost back to you. Let us help you find, lead the 99 and find the one. Let us be fishermen. Let us be the fishermen that you want us to be, fishers of men, women, children. Be bold. Give us, give us strength and confidence and power to step out in faith and believe and know that you will show up and make amazing things happen. Thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your spirit. Fill everyone here in this house this week so that we may go out and just make 
a Jesus impression on those around us. Not our impression, not a good impression, not a great impression, a Jesus impression on those around us. Let people walk away going, that person's got something special going on and I want it. That's what we want. We want that for Lord. We want people who encounter us to say, that person's got something special and I want it. Thank you, Lord. Bless us with an amazing week of being Jesus on earth as it is in heaven. And all God's people said, amen.